Bible prophecy is an intercept from the mind of the all-knowing, all-powerful, all-sovereign God of the universe. God doesn't tell us everything that he's going to do or that he's going to sovereignly allow Satan to do in all countries and all regions of the world at all times in history. But he does tell us some of the things that are going to happen in some countries and some regions at some periods of time in the future. Unfortunately, too many Christians ignore or dismiss Bible prophecy. First, let me take you back to 2006. That's the year that I wrote my first nonfiction book, Epicenter, why the current rumblings in the Middle East will change your world. I laid out 10 specific headlines that the world would one day read. Chapter 11 was called Future Headline. New war erupts in the Middle East as earthquakes, pandemics hit Europe, Africa, and Asia. Now that was 12 years ago. And sure enough, these headlines are things that we've been reading ever since. But let's be clear, I'm not a prophet a psychic or a modern Nostradamus, as some have tried to pin me. Uh, I don't have any unique ability within myself to see the future. Rather, as I explained in Epicenter, I'm writing about what God says is coming. Bible prophecy is an intercept from the mind of the all-knowing, all-powerful, all-sovereign God of the universe. God doesn't tell us everything that he's going to do or that he's going to sovereignly allow Satan to do in all countries and all regions of the world at all times in history. But he does tell us some of the things that are gonna happen in some countries and some regions at some periods of time in the future. Unfortunately, too many Christians ignore or dismiss Bible prophecy, but I take it seriously. And when I write books about prophecy or teach about prophecy, I encourage people to study the scriptures carefully, take the prophecies literally, and consider how to walk with Christ more faithfully in light of what God says is coming. In the New Testament, for example, the Lord Jesus Christ warned his disciples that in the last days, terrible wars, earthquakes, and infectious plagues and diseases would spread across the globe. To name just a few of the signs, the birth pangs, the contraction release, contraction release, that Jesus said would precede his second coming. In Luke chapter 21, for example, our Messiah prophesied that when you hear of wars and disturbances, don't be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end does not immediately follow. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be great earthquakes and in various places, plagues and famines, and there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. Now, when I wrote Epicenter, I base it on this and related prophecies, but many critics and skeptics called me loony. One anchor on CNN called me the mayor of crazy town. But look at what just happened since 2006. Not only did we see the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq intensify and devastate the Middle East, we saw the rise of the Islamic State and its genocide against Christians, and then the war to destroy ISIS and dismantle its caliphate. Last year, Russia launched the biggest land war in Europe since World War II. More than 200,000 people are dead. And now, Vladimir Putin is poised to escalate. He's massing more than a quarter of a million additional Russian troops on the borders of Ukraine and threatening to use nuclear weapons. Meanwhile, in 2020, we saw communist China unleash the Wuhan virus, the COVID-19 pandemic, which became the deadliest plague in a century, killing nearly 7 million people already. Also, since 2006, we've seen one horrific earthquake after another strike around the world, including the Middle East, including those in Turkey and Syria just last week the deadliest series of earthquakes to hit the Middle East in nearly a hundred years. The images are heart-wrenching. Death, destruction, shrieking orphaned babies, shattered, despondent parents. The initial quake registered 7.8 on the Richter scale, and then came two more quakes nearly as bad. These were followed by dozens of aftershocks, and now more than 100,000 people are dead or wounded, and the numbers continue to climb. Witnesses in Turkey told reporters it felt like the apocalypse. An aid worker in Syria's war-ravaged city of Aleppo told the BBC, 
we were in hell before the earthquake, and now we're in the deepest level of hell. The U.S. has sent billions of dollars worth of rescue equipment, tents, blankets, medicine, clothing, and other emergency assistance, as have other governments. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, whose government and the previous government has worked hard in recent months to reconcile relations with Turkey, immediately sent nearly 400 rescue workers, doctors, nurses, and other emergency response specialists to help the Turkish government deal with the crisis. Christian ministries are also providing desperately needed aid. Franklin Graham's ministry, Samaritan's Purse, immediately sent an evangelical Christian medical team and a mobile field hospital to Turkey. A Turkish man who runs an evangelical ministry in Turkey told Christianity Today magazine that Christian doctors and engineers have rushed to the front lines eager to love their neighbors and care for those who are suffering just as Christ commanded. This is a test of the church, he said, and I'm proud of my brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. So am I. I'm encouraged by how the church is responding to this crisis. At the same time, we need to see the bigger picture. These earthquakes are not simply tragedies. They're end times prophecies coming to pass, and we need to prepare ourselves because something far worse is coming. Now, I know some of you watching may be skeptics, and you're thinking, Joel, come on. These earthquakes are terrible, yes, but you're blowing them out of proportion. They're not prophetic. They're not fulfillment of Bible passages that tell people to watch for earthquakes to become more numerous and catastrophic as the world approaches the return of Jesus Christ. Don't be ridiculous, Joel. These quakes are just random acts of nature. Look, I hear you skeptics, but, but look at the facts. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, 19 of the 20 biggest earthquakes in all of human history have occurred since 1900. In fact, the U.S. government says that the world is now experiencing some 20,000 earthquakes a year, or about 55 a day. That's right, 55 earthquakes a day. And given increasing urbanization around the globe, the fact that more and more people are moving out of the countryside, moving into big cities to find work, and thus becoming, they're becoming so concentrated in huge apartment buildings and neighborhoods that even less intense quakes can now do horrific damage. Take the 2010 earthquake in Haiti, for example. It only registered 7.0 on the Richter scale. And that's why it's not in the top five or top 10 or even the top 100 most intense earthquakes in history. Yet, it was the deadliest earthquake in nearly 500 years and one of the deadliest in all of recorded history, killing more than 300,000 people. Look, I know that it's not popular to say it, but I have to say it and you need to hear it. We are seeing more earthquakes than ever before in human history with greater frequency, horrific destruction, and massive casualties. And Bible prophecy tells us that things far, far worse are coming. Hey, I'm Mati Shoshani, and thank you for watching the TBN Israel YouTube channel. We hope this video gave you greater understanding of Israel and her people. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. We'd love to hear from you, so be sure to share what you've learned and ask your questions and comments below. And invite your friends to join the conversation.